Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm John R. and I'm your instructor. Today I'm going to focus on acrylic jewelry. I'm going to show you how to assemble a large statement necklace like this one using today's fashion colors. In another video, I have earrings that go along with them, just like this. So let me clear the desk and I'll show you how we get started. Okay, the first step to getting started with the necklace is to cut the acrylic rod. Now, the acrylic rod that I'm using is a quarter inch acrylic rod that you can purchase from a plastic supply store, you can find it online, and you might also be able to find it at an aquarium store. It's something that goes inside of the rocks and coral that they use in the aquariums to build landscapes. Okay, you're also going to need a tube cutting jig or something that's going to allow you to measure your pieces to be consistent. You don't really want to mark on the acrylic with a permanent marker. It's better to just have a tool that has a stop on it so that the piece of acrylic will butt up against that stop, allowing you to cut the same length over and over again. I'm also going to use my jeweler saw. Now your jeweler saw should be your go-to cutting tool for most anything, especially with plastics. And I'm going to use a file and a sanding stick in order to finish off the ends. Now the ends can be polished. Uh, you could do that by hand or with your flex shaft, but it really isn't necessary. To cut the acrylic, I'm going to have to sit down at the bench. And when you sit at the bench, you want to make sure that your feet are flat on the floor and your back is straight. And the other thing that you may want to do is put on your safety glasses. Now, there probably won't be a lot of things flying around in the air that could hit me in the eye, but you better take precautions just in case because you only got two. Be sure to check out our safety video for other advice on keeping yourself safe in the lab so that you can have a lot of continued fun creating jewelry that you'll sell and wear. Alright, so let's get to this. Now I'm going to use the disc, or not, sorry, not disc, the uh, tube cutter. Now the tube cutter has a cradle in it that will hold the acrylic and there's a stop at the end of it that will allow me to cut a consistent length. Now, I'm going to hold it on the bench pin, and I'm going to hold the material down. It's a little bit too thick to use this aspect of the tool. So I'm just going to use my thumb, and I'm going to use my jeweler saw. I would recommend using a number two blade for this. So using the guide of the tube cutter, I'm just going to start sawing. Now, something to remember when you're sawing is that if you go too fast while you're cutting plastic, the plastic will actually melt around the blade and freeze the blade. And if that happens, you're kind of stuck. The best thing for you to do would be to stop. Let's pretend that I did it now. You would stop and just pull the blade up at an angle. And what it will do is it will break all the little bonds that the little pieces of plastic that have melted to it have made, and you'll be able to continue sawing. Take your time. Try to cut as straight a line as possible. But you don't want to leave any sharp ends. So that's going to be uh, taken care of in the next little phase, where we actually use the file and the sanding stick. OK, I've almost got this one finished. All right, I've cut through it. And now I'm going to drop it out. There we go. So you can see that I have a perfectly cut two inch length of acrylic. Now, the acrylic can chip, or it might have a little sharp edge that might be uncomfortable for somebody wearing it. So you want to take your file, support the piece in your bench pin, and just file the end flush. Once you get the end flush, you may want to use either your file or your sanding stick. And what you want to do is you want to just go around the edge to break the edge. That will, that will eliminate the possibility of the piece of plastic from chipping, and it will take away any sharp edges. Now, if you're a real stickler for everything being bright and shiny and polished, it's possible to either use your flexible shaft with an appropriate buffing attachment to polish this end, or you can actually do it by hand. 
Now, I would recommend that you pre-sand this to about a 1600 grit before you begin polishing. Okay, let me show you the next step. Let me clear this away. The next step is to drill the piece to receive the attaching uh, element. So to do that, I'm going to need a block of wood and I'm going to need my flexible shaft. And I'm going to stand up to do this. I don't need to be sitting down. In fact, I kind of like to stand over it while I do it. Okay, so if you're drilling for a necklace, you need to lay the piece down and drill all the way through it. Now, you want to watch your speed. Just like when you're sawing, if you go too fast with the drill, the drill bit can actually get frozen in the acrylic because the little elements that you're cutting away can overheat and fuse to the tool and cause it to stop. So watch your speed. A nice, slow, steady rate is always uh, preferred. So I'm going to drill through this. Make sure that you have it centered and ready to go. This one's ready. Okay, now I'm making two different styles with the same exact materials. Now you can see over here, this one, the piece of acrylic has been painted on one surface with a series of little dots. I made these using some fashion colored nail polish. Now the dots are all along one side within a margin of about, oh, maybe, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch or so. Now the idea is that you'll look through the acrylic like a lens and it seems to have extra movement and color. On this other one, what I did was I wanted it to have more of a winter frost kind of look to it. So what I did is I drilled into the acrylic. Again, I just worked in an area that's probably no wider than maybe a quarter of an inch wide, and I went into the material without going through it using a drill. So let me show you how to do both of these. They're really easy. Now, before you do this, you want to make sure that you have a good work surface, especially for the nail polish. So I'll just put down a little piece of paper, and we can get started. Now, I am using nail polish that I got for not too much money at a local store. And, like I said, it's in colors that fit the, the fashion styles of today. And all I want to do is to just dot with the applicator brush just down the back, just like that. And just randomly place little dots. Now leave some negative space so that you can fill in with the other colors. And in this case, I have all warm colors. Try to choose a color palette that will work well within your wardrobe if you're keeping these to wear yourself. So you can see if I keep this steady, I should be able to easily apply all of the colors in just a few seconds. And you can go with whatever color you like, and in this case, by mixing all warm colors, um, if you wanted it to be particularly yellow or red or orange, you could do that too. You just have to put a little bit more of one particular color. And anybody who's been watching these videos knows orange is my favorite color. Okay, so we're just going to add a few more dots. And now I will just leave that one to dry. Now, I don't want to disturb it while it's drying, so I'm going to put this one down here out of the way. Okay. Now, in order to make the more frosty looking one, all I need to do is just drill into the piece. So, I'm just going to lay it down on my workbench. I'm not drilling through it. You just want to be careful and not drill into your fingers. But just take the drill and just drill part ways into it. There. Now I did just one for you. 
And I'll put it over here on the black so you can see it a little bit better. But I only went, I made one hole, and through that one hole, I was able to make three different little d directional drill marks. So it kind of has sort of that crystal growth pattern look to it. So I could continue this all the way through until I get something like this. Now I'm going to show you how to connect your elements to create a necklace similar to this one. To do this, you're going to need a clasp, two connecting jump rings, and a 16 or 18 inch length of chain. You'll also need your five elements that you've prepared. And this time I'm going to use the crystal-y looking ones. First thing to do is get out a pair of pliers, two pairs of pliers actually, and attach your clasp and your connecting ring to the ends of your chain. And this is really easy to do. All you have to do is put your pliers on either side of the jump ring and open it up like a little ballerina saying hello. So I'm going to pre-open both of these. Now, unfortunately for me, lucky for you, I chose a rather elaborate chain. And this makes it a little bit hard to find the actual end, but once you locate it, what you want to do is just put the jump ring through the appropriate link, and then just add your clasp. In this case, I'm adding a lobster claw. Now you could add a magnetic clasp, or a hook and eye, or a toggle, whatever you like, whatever you're comfortable with, and whatever's going to complement your jewelry the best. Okay, so that's nice and secure. So now I'm going to just find the end of this side of the chain. And lucky for me, it was easy to find. And now I'm just going to put my jump ring through. And I'm going to close it down and shut it. Now, the reason why I'm adding a larger jump ring to the other end is because I want to have a logical place for the person who's going to be wearing this necklace to be able to feel a scale difference so that she knows that that's the link to go through. But the reality is she could link to any of these links if she wanted to make the necklace slightly shorter. Okay, once you got the two together, Rather than using a ruler, it's probably easier just to hold the clasp and let the chain drop. And I've found the center right here. So all I need to do is cut and create a break. To do that, I need to use a pair of diagonal cutters. And I'll just clip this jump ring and pull the chain apart. Now you notice some little pieces came off. They're just part of the decorative rings. I'll just set those aside. It's no biggie. All right. Now, in our other video where we talked about the earrings, we used some head pins. And here's some more head pins right there. Now, you can get these from any jewelry supply store or bead store. And head pins are either flat on the end, or in this case, they have a nice loop on the end. So I'm going to use those and I'm going to short, make a little shortcut by adding my piece to the head pin. Now I just need to create a loop on the other side. All I have to do is I'm going to pull the wire straight up, and then what I want to do is I want to grab a pair of round nose pliers, and I'm going to initiate a turn. Now, you can see that that's way too long for that to go all the way around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to go all the way around, like so, and then I'll come back and take my cutters and cut the excess away. There we go. Now that loop's a little large. Um, I'm going to go back here in just a second, and I'll make it a little smaller. The way that you'd make it smaller is just basically just use a smaller area on your pliers and you can actually reduce the size of it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to prepare all of these elements and then I'm going to work them into the necklace. So, Okay, I'm to the point where I'm ready to put my last element on. 
and let me grab it here. The one thing that I would recommend that you pay attention to when you do this is, um, since you're decorating the acrylic on one side, make sure that you have that side all in the, going in the same direction. You don't want one backwards. Okay, the assembly is so easy. It's just bending, finding the right loop, and bending the, the attachment down. And okay, I've got one last little thing to bend. And voila! It's a finished necklace. So, between you take your choice if you want to use nail color or if you want to use the drill. Either one's going to make a beautiful statement necklace. Thanks for watching. Be sure to watch our other videos and check out our website for more products and, and information.